Welcome to the City Council meeting on September 5th, and if you'd please join us in the flag salute, Councilman George is going to lead us. Thank you. If you'll be seated, please. Our first presentation will be the Proclamation for National Preparedness Month, September 2017. I'd like to call up Ms. Chris Wolf, Administrative Manager with the Chino Police Department. Hi, Chris. Okay. Whereas National Preparedness Month creates an opportunity for every American to learn more about ways to prepare for all types of emergencies from potential terrorist attacks to natural disasters. All citizens have a responsibility to contribute to their own safety and security as part of a larger effort to strengthen the ability of the Sino <laughs> City of Chino community to mitigate, prepare, respond to, and recover from unexpected emergencies and disasters as part of a broader campaign of national preparedness. And whereas all Chino residents are asked to make preparedness a priority in their homes by tapping into the resources already available to them, making themselves resilient to disaster, by taking steps to prepare now including assembling important emergency supplies, creating a family communication plan, learning how to work with your neighbor, and volunteering to help in your community to help make citizen preparedness a priority in this community. All Chino residents and businesses are encouraged to re register for Chino Notify, the city's mass notification system that provides both emergency and community alert information that can be sent to any electronic device. device. And whereas the federal, state, local governments, and the private sector are working together to prevent and respond to all types of emergencies, these activities, along with a vigilant public, contribute to a level of state and national preparedness that's critical to securing our state and the homeland. And now, therefore, I, Eunice Emiloa, Mayor of the City of Chino, do hereby proclaim the month of September to be National Preparedness Month, and that the City of Chino will continue to participate in efforts that ensure we have an integrated disaster response capability so all city emergency responders and general public can work together efficiently. Chris, would you like to say a few? Yes. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council, as well. We just want to invite everybody to uh, join with us this month in getting prepared. We're seeing what's happening all over the nation in terms of disasters that are occurring and another one on its way to Florida. So we just want to take this opportunity to encourage people to get prepared. I also want to announce that on the 14th of this month, we're going to be doing a preparedness workshop. I believe there's a slide that will come up and give you more information about that at the police department. We opened up registration for this a couple weeks ago. We've already got 100 RSVPs. So people are very much taking this seriously, and we invite you to attend. There's still spots available if you'd like to join. The link is on there, or you can go to the Chino Police Department Facebook page and get more information about it. But we encourage you to do your part in getting prepared. We're counting on our citizens to do that. And so um, we can help give you some tips on the 14th. Thank you, Chris. Even, you know, if we don't have a big flood or the big earthquake, just this heat alone, check on your neighbors, especially if you have elderly or disabled neighbors, because sometimes the air conditioner goes out or they just don't operate it properly, and people can overheat and die. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Okay, our next proclamation is National Childhood Obesity Awareness Month, which is also September 2017. I'd like to call up Jake Velasco from the City of Chino Community Services. He's a coordinator. And Casey Powderly from Chino Valley YMCA. She's the executive director now. Whereas September 2017 marks the seventh annual National Childhood Obesity Awareness Month. And whereas the city of Chino, along with its community partners, Chino Valley Unified School District, Chino Valley YMCA, and Focus on Youth Collaborative, work to prioritize the health and well-being of Chino's children by supporting programs such as Healthy Chino, Chino Walks Kids, Healthy Family Day, Tykes Fun and Fit, and Chino Valley Unified School District Health Center. The City of Chino works in conjunction with youth sports leagues to provide space for physical activities and team sports for children in the community. And whereas the percentage of children with obesity in the United States has more than tripled since 1970s, um, today about one in five school-aged children between six and 19 has obesity. Obese children have an 80% chance of being obese adults and are more at risk for associated adult chronic diseases, including high blood pressure, heart disease, type 2 diabetes, and stroke. And whereas participating in physical activity is important for children and teens, as it can have beneficial ben uh, effects, not only on body weight, but also on blood pressure, bone strength, and mental well-being. Proper nutrition is important for youth as it impacts their physical and mental health, body weight, and is important with the prevention of chronic diseases. And whereas childhood obesity is preventable, yet it does not appear to be declining. Now, therefore, I, Eunice Emuloa, Mayor of the City of Chino, do hereby proclaim the month of September 2017 as National Adult, I'm sorry, National Childhood Obesity Aware Month, month and urge all residents to take advantage of the programs and services that are available in the City of Chino. Jack. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council, for this proclamation and helping raise awareness um, for this epidemic. Um, on behalf of Healthy Chino, I want to thank you guys again. Um, we understand the um, importance of educating our community about this epidemic. Uh, with our community garden, we're able to reach out to the youth and teach them about proper nutrition and diet. With our Healthy Chino Kids programs, we're able to do outreach to the after-school programs and this uh, school district um, and teach them the importance of physical activity and leading healthy lives. Um, our partnership with the um, school district, uh, we have our health center that also provides services um, to our kids in the school district. Um, so thank you again. Thank you. Thank you again for having us here. Um, like they said, we partner with so many programs that offer awareness. And I think that's the key because childhood obesity without educating our adults and the families, it can't be stopped. So we need to start with our children and with our families. And because of the great leadership we have in this community and the partnerships we have, we are able to assist those families with wonderful programs, education, and assistance. The great parks we have just to encourage play outside, taking a few minutes to put the cell phone down. Instead of the video games, we're using our parks. All the programs that we offer are a wonderful start just to encourage, like Jake said, Grilling, healthy grilling, it encourages just little subtle hit, little bits. You don't have to go out and say, oh, I have to exercise for four hours today. 20 minutes a day, take your kids out, take your family out, encourage one another. Just to take that extra one minute is a big difference in everybody's life. So again, thank you, Council and Mayor, for bringing awareness to this epidemic that eventually could cost us but um, thousands of dollars in medical costs if we don't put a um, stop to it now. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much for both of you. you. Next is Suicide Prevention Month, September 2017. I'd like to call up June Y. Seho? Seno? Sano. Sorry. Uh, Seno. Sano. Golly whiz. City of Chino, clinical specialist uh, and our Community Crisis Response Team Officer, Broderick Phillips, and our Chino Police Officer, John Cervantes. Also our Chino Police Officer, Reggie Barber. I apologize for bumbling the name. 
troubled all the time. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Whereas on behalf of the citizens of Chino, we recognize the month of September 2017 as Suicide Prevention Awareness Month, shedding light on those suffering with depression or other mental or behavioral health issues. The health and well-being of all of our citizens is of the utmost important, and the City of Chino, Chino Valley Unified School District, and the Department of Behavioral Health's Community Crisis Response Team recognize that suicide is a human tragedy that transcends socioeconomic status, age, gender, and ethnicity. Ethnicity. Eth all right. The City of Chino, Chino Valley Unified School, I just did that. In California, Chu oh. Let's just roll back. <laughs> Whereas in California, suicide is the 11th leading cause of death overall and the second leading cause of death for ages 15 to 24, and nationally takes the lives of nearly 44,200 Americans every year. Suicide has an everlasting impact on the survivors who are left to process the loss of their loved one and who are at an increased risk of suicide themselves. Suicide is preventable through increased knowledge about warning signs, timely intervention, and by limiting access to lethal means for those at risk. Suicide prevention efforts should be developed and encouraged to the maximum extent possible, and the City of Chino offers mental health services to youth, adults, and families. The City of Chino partners with the Department of Behavioral Health's Community Crisis Response Team, a community-based mobile crisis team that provides assistance to those who are experiencing a mental health emergency and provides mental health assessments, relapse pre 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 prevention, gosh, and follow-up services in support of the individuals and families. And whereas the City of Chino, in partnership with the Chino Valley Unified School District and their resource officers, intervenes and provides assistance in crisis situations at school sites in prevention of harm to self or others and provide appropriate resources to bring better equip them to face life's challenges. Now, therefore, I, Eunice Emiloa, Mayor of the City of Chino, do hereby proclaim September 2017 as Suicide Prevention Awareness Month in the City of Chino and urge all citizens to continue to work to prevent suicide and to take action, know the signs, reach out, and know there is help and hope. Thank you so much, Mayor Uloa and City <laughs> Council members. I know this was a lot to read, and there's a lot of staggering statistics that were shared already. Um, I'm so happy to accept this proclamation uh, for the city of Chino, along with those who are uh, standing here with me. This is a very important issue that hits home to so many of us. And just to give you a little bit of information on the city of Chino counselors, we do have them available at the schools and then also at our clinic. They are trained to look for red flags. They are trained to listen for any possible issues of self-harm. And then we definitely rely on uh, other support networks and they are here with me today. Uh, so glad they took time out to be with us. We have two of our resource officers who are located at our school sites, Officer Cervantes and Officer Barber. And we also have Roderick, Roderick, Phillips, <laughs> who, who our city is so fortunate to have our own crisis response um, uh, person and that's his full-time job which keeps him very busy and so I will give them opportunity just to share the many ways they are keeping our uh, city safe. Officer thank you. Thank you Mayor. Thank you Council. Thank you community stakeholders. My name is John Cervantes. I'm a school resource officer at Ramona and Magnolia Junior High School. So I share two of our schools here. The impact that we're having in our schools is huge. Not only that we have to really pay attention to what our kids are saying and doing their behaviors so just, you know, I'd really just like to bring awareness, especially to that risk behavior that we may be seeing, whether it's at our communities, our schools, just out with, uh, just with the families in general. So just please, just be aware of what's going on. Pay attention to those little signs. Sometimes it could be subtle behaviors or it could be huge behaviors. So just please, please just bring that awareness. Take the time to ask for help and just let us know if there's anything we could do. I'm going to turn over to my partner. He's part of our community impact, our crisis impact team and also for Roger to just explain a little bit more. Hello, thank you, Mayor, Council. Uh, my name is Officer Reggie Barber. I'm actually a school resource officer at Chino High School. I'm also part of the crisis intervention team. 
Uh, one thing about our crisis intervention team is we were able to uh, train ourselves as far as behavioral issues with mental health and dealing with people with schizophrenia, bipolar uh, issues, and uh, all other forms of mental uh, health disorders. Uh, we were able to, to establish a training program, which we brought down to our entire department. We were able to enable to train our whole department. So, of course, with our times with people who have mental illnesses, who live out in the streets, it, it gives us a better understanding of how to deal with someone who is emotional and having an, an incident at that time and going through an episode. Uh, one thing about our crisis intervention team, uh, we actually get to see past that episode and contact them again on another level. And when they're feeling better, to get them resources that are provided through the DBH, the uh, where Roderick works for the CCRT. So it's offering them more resources and more help. And uh, there's a ton of information that the county offers that people don't take, take advantage of, as well as the city with our counseling. So it's just getting that, passing that information along to them and knowing that they're not alone. So that's one of the things that the crisis intervention team has impacted with a lot of people throughout our city. So we're gonna keep going and keep striving to touch more people and get them the best help that we can. Thank you, Mayor, Councilman. Um, I work with San Bernardino County Department of Behavioral Health in conjunction with Chino Police Department. Um, just to piggyback on what Officer Barber said, with the CIT team, I work closely with them and meet with individuals in a crisis need to get them those resources um, to help them further down the line, um, if it could be in the sense of a hospitalization or just connecting to a county clinic where they can have that continuum of care, which um, a lot of individuals within the community need who are who have a mental illness. Um, you know, a mental illness is something that affects us all. Um, families, you know, friends, sisters, brothers, um, but we, you know, strive to continue to help and assist those individuals with that need to, um, to help them get to those resources. Thank you very much for being here this evening. This is such an important subject. And I know our police family uh, has suffered two suicides. Two families have suffered from this very, very item. It's more common than what we think. Even if it's just depression, you know, it isn't something sometimes that people can just shrug off and get over. So, yeah, there's, there have been instances in our cities that have um, been very publicized about and I, I you know I hope I know what you're doing is really important but I think it also goes back to what the police department says and that's if you see something say something you know it might be somebody that's kind of crying out for help but can't come forward and say anything so thank you so much for what you're doing I know it's very very important thank you And our last is the Mayor's Home Beautification Award for September 2017. I'd like to call it Phyllis Noriega. She lives at 12405 Lorraine Avenue. Hi, Phyllis. We have a certificate here for you. Um, it reads, thank you for your continued improvement and maintenance of your home, resulting in a substantial contribution to the overall appearance of the community. I'd like to present that with you, and I think they're going to show the picture of your beautiful home. We also have a certificate of recognition from Supervisor Kurt Hagman. And then this is the picture of your beautiful home, and I see you went with drought tolerant. Thank you very much. We have one of our city pins for you, as well as a pen, and of course, the coveted yard sign. So all your neighbors know that you won the award of the month. <laughs> so do you do all of your own yard work? or It doesn't require a whole lot of work now, so uh, I do do what there, it requires. But yeah. Did you do the design yourself? I had someone help me. <laughs> okay. I'm quite talented. <laughs> well, congratulations, and thank you very much. You. Your name will also go into the... Um, the list of possibilities for winning the uh, Home Beautification Award for the year. And if you win that, then you'll be invited to our State of the City address. Oh, okay. okay, thank you very thank you much. So much.
Our city attorney now will um, report our action coming out of closed session this evening. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, members of the council and <coughs> audience. The city council met in closed session to discuss the sole item on the closed session agenda, namely conference with legal counsel existing litigation under the case name Chino MHC versus city of Chino. City Council received an update and no further discussion or reportable action occurred. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Fred. And next, under public communication, our first request to speak is Mr. Josh Collins of the Calvary Chapel Chino Valley. At this time, I'd like to invite anyone who would like to join us to stand for the invocation. and we thank you for the many blessings we have in this uh, wonderful city, Lord. May we never take these things for granted, Lord. The neighbors, the officers, Lord, the uh, council members, the mayor, Lord. May we be continually thankful for all that you've blessed us with in our lives, Lord. And we continually pray for protection of our city, Lord. That you would be with the officers and the first responders, Lord. That you put your hand upon them and protect them as they go out and serve the community and put their lives on the line. And I would like to lift up uh, Texas, Lord, and Florida as they, Texas just got hit by the um, hurricane, Lord. May you continue to be with them and Florida as um, the hurricane's coming, Lord. May you continue to be with those. May people leave if they are in danger, Lord. And may you just protect us here, Lord. We thank you for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we have two written requests to speak. The first is from Sandra Rose. Thank you, um, council, staff, and public. Um, I don't really wanna be here tonight. I'd rather be at home with my husband, my dog, and my cat, waiting for America's Got Talent to come on, my favorite show, but I felt compelled that I had to come tonight. My husband always says, silence means you buy it. So I can't stay silent um, with what, the news that came out today from the federal government that the deferred action for childhood arrivals is being thrown to the wolves. Hopefully, hopefully they, the Congress will support keeping it. But I feel very strongly that we have so many people in our community that we probably don't even know are participating in this program. I'm sure we have students at the Chafee College campus, at Chafee College campus right here, that are participating in this program. And it is cruel and to me, it's a crime to send these people back to, to where? I mean, they spent their whole lives here. They, English could be their first language. Um, they've done everything. They've given all their personal information <coughs> to the federal government to be in this program. They have no criminal activity. They just want to live their lives here. They've got jobs or going to school. So I was thinking about the proclamations for childhood obesity and other things, and I'm thinking, why not a proclamation from this council saying we support these young people that are part of the DACA program. We want them to stay here. They're part of our community. We want them to fulfill their dreams and continue to be part of our community. So I hope you might consider that in the future and thank you very much. Thank you, Sandra. Next written request to speak is Melissa Campani. Well, good evening, Madam Mayor, Council, and staff. Uh, my name is Melissa Campani, and I'm here representing your county supervisor, Kurt Hagman. Uh, the supervisor asked me to stop by and invite all constituents to his next Coffee with Kurt. The next Coffee with Kurt will be taking place Saturday, September the 16th, from 8 a.m. to 9.30. And uh, the next uh, coffee will be at the, held at the Montclair Senior Center at 5111. Benito Street, and that is in the city of Montclair. This month's uh, special guest will also be uh, Mayor Paul Eaton. So please stop by if you get a chance and would like a chance to uh, hear from the county supervisor and see what he has to say about upcoming things. And uh, one more quick announcement about the business of the quarter. 
I am pleased to announce that our last business of the quarter uh, is a business located here in the city, the beautiful city of Chino, and that uh, award goes to Core Real Estate. So that is very exciting, and we are busy collecting nominations for the next uh, quarter, which is ending quickly, September the 30th. So we are hoping that uh, the constituents here in the city of Chino and uh, the other cities in the district, please fill out your nomination forms for your favorite business. Um, there are some quick questions on there, and uh, we're going to be choosing a winner very soon after September the 30th. Where Thank do they you very find much. the form, Melissa? Around the corner. Where do they find the form? Is that on the oh, website? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, it's on the website, on Supervisor Hagman's website. Uh, it, it, the easiest way is just to Google <coughs> Hagman District 4. District okay. 4. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, those are the, all the written requests to speak. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to address the council on an item that's not on the agenda? Okay, we'll move on then to the consent calendar. A motion, oh, do any council members wish to have any items pulled? Nope, okay, then a motion would be appropriate, please. Okay, there's a motion from Councilman Howie, second from, I'm sorry, Mayor Pro Tem it's Howie, okay. I never get that it's right. Okay. Council and second from Councilman George, and the consent calendar passes unanimously. <laughs> Next on the agenda is public hearings. Prior to the vote of the City Council, any member of the audience will have the opportunity to address the Council on any items listed under public hearings. Council requests, but it's not required that you state your name and address prior to making any remarks. First item is item number 19, introduction of ordinance number 2017-001, amending chapter 10.64 chapter of the Chino Municipal Code. Our staff report this evening will be provided by Mr. Warren Morleone, our city planner. Good evening, Madam Mayor, members of the city council. This next item before you is a request to modify the city's current parade and special event ordinance to better assist staff with the process of reviewing all future parade and special event permit applications. The most significant change to the ordinance is the addition of a new category to help regulate large events that last three days or longer, or that have an anticipated attendance of 5,000 or more people per day. This new category has been created due to the extra time and effort it takes staff to process these large events in the city. For these events, the city's planning commission will now review all permit applications for large parades and special events the first year. Provided the events are substantially similar in nature the following year, then those events can be reviewed and approved at a staff level. I would like to point out that city-sponsored and co-sponsored events, funeral processions, and certain types of marches and spontaneous events are exempt from the permit process. This would include the annual corn feed <coughs> run, car show, and cruise, the fireworks spectacular, high school band review, and Christmas parade. So those will be exempt from the, the process. Other key ordinance modifications include clarification of the application process, insurance requirements, filing deadlines, and the appeal and revocation process. In addition to the ordinance changes, staff has established new fees associated with the processing of these large events and expedited events, and those are listed in your staff report, the attached resolution. It is important to note that the smaller events are not proposed to change the fees or the process, so those will continue to be approved at a staff level. It's just the large events that will go to Planning Commission for review and approval. I would also like to point out that the ordinance modification are exempt from the provisions of CEQA. So with that, staff recommends that the City Council conduct the public hearing, approve the introduction of Ordinance 2017-001 to amend the Municipal Code for the Parade and Special Event Changes, and Resolution 2017-024 amending the fees for the Parades and Special Event Permit Applications. That concludes my presentation. Thank you, Warren. Prior to opening the public hearing, I'd like to ask if there are any questions from council members. Yes. You're saying that the planning commission is in charge of the uh, of the parades and the and the permits and stuff. It seems like it would be more in the bailiwick of the community services commission, and I was wondering why the planning commission is uh, is is. Uh, the, the uh, uh, author 
the authoritative body on this? Well, we, that's a great question. Well, we decided to make it the Planning Commission because they already review uh, special condition of use permits, and that's what, what the approval process would be, is through a special condition of use permit. Mm -hmm. So they have that purview. It made sense when we reviewed it and determined the, uh, the approval process. They already do it. They already approve special condition of use permits. Okay. And then the, the second question, you said that uh, the, there was, there's not going to be uh, more of a, of a charge or more of a fee for, uh, you know, for most of the, uh, the parades and stuff, but there, is a, uh, there are two new fees that, uh, that are part of this, and, the, and those, two, those two fees are, are for, for which and how, and how much are they? You're correct. We had to establish a fee for it going to Planning Commission because there was extra work. So the fee to go to Planning Commission for all staff, for staff processing the application and going to Planning Commission is 2,763. So we established a new fee for that. And then we also developed a new fee for expediting uh, special events. So that would be any special events. In the past, we were receiving events at the last minute, sometimes after the deadline, and we were expected to expedite it real quick. We never established a fee at that point, at, to this date. So we thought it was appropriate since I was already gonna amend the ordinance to go ahead and, and establish that fee. So that's the other fee, and it's 174. All right, thank you. Any other questions? On special events, Paul, is that? Yes. Pull your mic around, please. Oh, okay. On special events, does that include the rave uh, concerts that are we in question? We don't allow those. You don't allow those? Yeah. So that it's included, or we don't just. Okay. okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Okay, then we'll open the public hearing. Are there any members of the audience that would like to address the council on this item? Okay, seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. And council, any other further comments or questions? No? Okay, then I would call for a motion, please. Okay, there's a motion from Council Elrod, Councilman Elrod, and second from Councilman George. Before we call for the vote, um, I will ask Fred to read the ordinance. I'm following your rules. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Appreciate that. Um, before the council is ordinance number 2017-001, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Chino, California, amending Chapter 10.64 of the Chino Municipal Code regarding parades and special events, reading by title only and waiving further reading. Thank you, Madam Mayor. You're welcome, and the item did pass unanimously. Next item on the agenda is new business. Item number 20, <clears throat> excuse me, introduction of ordinance number 2017-0010, amending procurement provisions within chapter 3.32 of the Chino Municipal Code. Our staff report this night, this evening will be provided by Ria Medina, our purchasing manager. Good evening, Mayor and members of the City Council. <clears throat> Uh, the city's current purchasing ordinance has been in effect since October 2, 2001. Since that time, staff periodically reviews whether its provisions remain relevant and best suited for the needs of the city while continuing to adhere to legal requirements. Uh, due to changes in state law and development of modern best procurement practices, staff has determined that updating the purchasing ordinance would help facilitate a more efficient procurement process. Some of the major changes that are suggested in the draft ordinance for the City Council's consideration include changes to definitions such as eliminating trash services from the definition of professional services and also removing the term public works to avoid confusion with the term public project. Also removing the three-year term limit from professional services agreement to allow the city to negotiate better economic terms through longer term contracts. A uh, contract term will be established in the guidelines promulgated by the city manager instead. Another change is updating the section for requirement for competitive pricing. Uh, this change identifies the types of purchases that may or may not be exempt from competitive pricing per state laws. So for example, it specifies that expenditures for public projects are not exempt from competitive pricing per the public contract code while emergency purchases, as determined by the city manager, are exempt from competitive pricing. Aside from an improved procurement process, staff believes that these recommended changes would create an appropriate balance between improved internal control over the expenditure of public funds and greater administrative responsibility. 
Therefore, it's staff recommendation that you approve introduction of ordinance 2017-010. That concludes my report and I'm available for any questions. Thank you, Ria. Uh, are there any questions from council members? Okay, this is not a public hearing, but is there anyone in the audience that would like to comment or ask a question? Okay, seeing none, uh, I would entertain a motion, please. Motion from Councilman George, second from Mayor Pro Tem Howie. Prior to um, asking for the vote, I would like to invite Fred to read the ordinance. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of the council. Uh, before the council is ordinance number 2017-010, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Chino, amending provisions of the City of Chino's purchasing ordinance at Chapter 3.32 of the Chino Municipal Code, reading by title only and waiving further reading. Thank you, Madam Mayor. You're welcome. Um, Angela, can you clear that and have another vote? Okay. Okay, the item was approved, four yes, one no. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. all right. I thought I pushed the wrong button. Okay. Next item is item number 21, award of contract 2017-18 concrete repair project. This is uh, our, our staff report this evening. will be provided by Jose O'Leary, our assistant city manager, Public Works. Thank you, Mayor and members of the City Council. As part of the city's ongoing concrete repair program, the Public Works Department is recommending various repairs to damage sidewalks, curbs, uh, driveways, uh, curbs and gutters uh, throughout the city and at various locations. Now, this year we prepared uh, contract specifications and bid documents. On July 20th, we received six bids. CT&T of Diamond Bar, California submitted the lowest bid in the amount of $296,712.50. Based on uh, staff's review of the, of the bid documents, uh, this firm has been deemed the lowest responsible bidder. Staff is also requesting to spend up to $29,671.25 for contingencies, bringing the total cost to three. 326, 383, and 75 cents if necessary. That concludes my report on this item and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Jose. Uh, any questions of staff? I have a, qu a couple of questions. Um, one, there's no detail in this staff report at all on the work that's gonna be done. Um, if council members or the public is interested, is that listing available somewhere on what they bid on? We, we do have a list of areas, but they are throughout the city. What we do is we review the city in areas that we know might have some tree damage or broken concrete uh, throughout. We start making a list quantities, but they're spread throughout the city. So there was, it was really difficult putting a map, a location map, and then a list of areas. Then please realize as, as we put those together and the months go on, damage could occur, and that's why we want the contingencies. So it's, it's kind of a moving target, but we too, do try to address the most troublesome areas. But if, if, uh, if you like, I mean, I, we do have a, a general map that highlights some of the areas, but it, it could vary again. So if there are questions, they can contact your department and find out if an area yeah. is being covered? Yes, absolutely. Okay. And then there's a huge difference between the lowest bidder and the highest bidder. Have we dealt with the lowest bidder before? Yes, there were our current bidder this last uh, term, the last three years. These contracts are generally good for one year with two one-year extensions, which is the same thing before you tonight. And uh, they had our most recent contract and they did a, a very good job for us. Oh, okay. Okay, then I would entertain a motion. And a second, please. It's been moved by Councilman Elrod, second by Councilman George. No report from Fred, please vote. Have to make sure I follow Fred's rules. And the item passes unanimously. Doing good, Fred? 
very well. <laughs> Item number 22, authorize additional work, Chino Avenue Storm Drain Project number SD-151. Our staff report this evening will be provided by Jesus Placencia, our city engineer. Good evening, Mayor and City Council members. Uh, Young & Associates was awarded a contract to construct the Chino Avenue storm drain and other pertinent improvements from Benson Avenue to Oaks Avenue. During construction, staff learned that the design engineer's final drawings did not depict the correct location where the new storm drain would tie into the existing storm drain on Chino Avenue. As a result, the design engineer was required to revise the final drawings to show, to show the correct tie-in point. Uh, this was done at no cost to the city. Uh, the redesigned plans do require storm drain improvements uh, that were not part of Young & Associates' initial bid items, including the construction of a four-foot by five-foot reinforced concrete box crossing in lieu of a 60-inch diameter pipe along a portion of Chino Avenue. Uh, for this reason, staff had to negotiate a contract change order with Young & Associates to address the cost to construct the redesigned portion of the storm drain system. The total estimated cost to construct these improvements is $164,388. However, the additional cost to be incurred by the city totals $124,388 because there would be a cost savings of approximately $40,000 uh, for the storm drain improvements that won't be constructed due to the redesign. Uh, staff is recommending that the city council authorize the additional expenditure in the amount of $124,388 and $88. This will allow the construction of the redesigned storm drain to commence and proceed on schedule, while city staff and the design engineer negotiate a settlement for the additional costs incurred due to the design error. Uh, that concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Jesus. Any questions of staff? Gary? Um, yes, um, and I probably, I hate to ask this one. Is this the same group that, that uh, put the cones out in the wrong location? On I don't know. Thank you. Jose Shagan. I know. Any other comments or questions? I know. I know. It was. It's a shock. Well, thank goodness we don't have to pay for the redesign. Right. But that's crazy. Okay. Are there any comments or questions from the public? Okay. Seeing none, I would entertain a motion. This is something we have to get done. I hope it doesn't turn out like Riverside Drive, though. Oh, I don't, I don't think so. I'll tell you what, that is a nightmare. Okay, there's a motion from Councilman, I'm sorry, Mayor Pro Tem Howie, second from Councilman Elrod, and the item passes unanimously. Can we get next council meeting, can we get a report on Riverside Drive? Absolutely. What's happening on it? Next on the agenda is mayor and council reports. Uh, first, I'd like everyone to be aware of the 9-11 memorial ceremony taking place at the Chino Valley Independent Fire District Station number 66, which is located at 13700707 Peyton Drive, Chino Hills at 9.30 in the morning. This event will allow the entire Chino Valley to come together and remember those who lost their lives on that fateful day, while also recognizing the courage and resolve showed by our entire account country in its aftermath. For more information, please call the Chino Valley Independent Fire District at 909-902-5260. I'd also like to give an early reminder to everyone that the annual Chino Day at the LA County Fair is scheduled for Wednesday, September 20th at Pomona Fairplex, located 1101 West McKinley Avenue in Pomona. All Chino residents who attend will be able to enjoy fun activities, including the Community Day Parade and a high school marching band competition. Admission for Chino residents is only $8, with the presentation of a coupon, coupon which can be obtained by visiting www.lacountyfair.com forward slash buy tickets and entering the promo code CHINO. For more information, please call 909-334-3258. Hope the weather stays cool. So to report on functions during the last three weeks, it was a very busy time. Um, August 21st, several of us attended Ed Graham's retirement celebration. 
Uh, on August 22nd, uh, I attended the, uh, several of us again attended the Villa de Sol housing project ribbon cutting. There were three homes that were the result of a partnership between the City of Chino, Neighborhood Partnership Housing Services Incorporated, and National Community Stabilization Fund. This development was an excellent example of public, private, and nonprofit uh, sectors that can come together to benefit and create solutions for affordable home ownership. And then three items on Wednesday. Wednesday was August 22nd, or 23rd was a busy day. There was the ribbon cutting at Newman Elementary for the new nearly $25,000 science, technology, engineering, arts, math lab room that was funded by the Chino Kiwanis Club. Every student in that school at Newman Elementary will be able to utilize this lab during the school year. And the hope is that it will inspire them to, in the future, ask for further classes in those disciplines and maybe even look toward science and technology as a career. And then I was sworn in, uh, not at, but in, at the West Valley Mosquito and Vector Control Board of Directors and attended the meeting. Um, interesting, I know Glenn used to um, repeatedly tell us about West Nile virus, which is very critical. They've also located through a, um, an obs a very observant citizen who called in about biting mosquitoes during the daytime. Our neighboring, one of our neighboring cities, uh, they found the mosquito species that carries yellow fever. <coughs> the mosquitoes weren't actually infected with yellow fever, but that type of mosquito is now in our area. So again, when you're out at dawn, dusk, um, please wear some kind of bug protectant with DEET. And if you observe anything unusual with biting mosquitoes during the day daytime, please call Vector Control and report it so that they can identify um, what's going on in your area. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Howie and I had our first meeting of the Annexation Measure M Committee with more meetings to follow. Uh, the group that was opposed to Measure H, which would allow a density increase from 30 to 180 homes, is working on a proposed change to Measure M, but it hasn't been submitted for consideration yet. I asked staff to email and print uh, the voting results of Measure H according to precincts. And then they're also going to overlay this information with district information so that we can see the voting results by so we'll city district. One. We'll get another one that has, has the, the overlay of the overlay. district on it. Um, I'd like to request that this information, there's a link provided on our city website so that that can be available to the public as well. And then on Saturday, August 26th, I attended the Spaghetti Dinner Fundraiser for Boy Scout Troop 2001 that was held at the Chino Senior Center. And those kids have amazing support, just amazing support. Monday, August 28th, I met with representatives of the proposed Francis Estates Development that's located in the Chino Sphere of Influence. Uh, they have requested meetings with several council members. Um, the zoning for that, um, that area is two units per acre, but this development is closer to three and a half units per acre. And although they are all one-story homes, I personally expressed my concern with these homes not being compatible with the surrounding zoning, which is uh, some of its pretty intense agricultural-related usages. On Wednesday, August 30th, I attended a workshop at Watermaster regarding water um, that's in storage, as you'll recall, um, we had opposed to their proposed hold on our water and storage. And they are so, saying now that uh, if all of the water and storage is used, as well as proposed future water storage, that we will be in a shortage in 2045. And so they're proposing um, some alternatives to uh, pumping I, not really rights, but how water is going to be pumped and used and what steps uh, they're going to propose next in um, coming up with a mutually satisfactory solution <coughs> to possible future program problems. So it's, uh, it never ends. It's just another struggle. Thursday, August 31st, I met with, uh, for several hours with our poor city manager, Matt Ballantyne, <laughs> to review city <laughs> issues. And on Friday, September 1st, uh, I was able to attend the birthday celebration for uh, 
senior members that uh, are, have birthdays in September that belong to the senior club, and that was fun. So it was a busy three weeks. Uh, okay, Mayor Pro Tem Howie, you have item number 23. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, um, you know, the Chino Day, as the mayor mentioned, Chino Day at the fair is coming up uh, Wednesday, September 20th, and um, the schools um, are, we bus between se seven and 8,000 of our Chino uh, youth to uh, Chino Day at the fair through the yellow bus program, and uh, it's very costly, and I'm asking for a community support donation from our fund for $1,000, so I, you know, that's what I'm asking for. Okay, then a motion would be appropriate. Motion from <coughs> Councilman George, second from Councilman Elrod. And the item passes unanimously. And then do you have further reports? Yeah, I got a, I got a couple of items. So, um, well, the mayor pretty much mentioned most of the items. You have been busy for the last three weeks, huh? Well, I've been busy. I thought retirement, you know, would mean <coughs> well, a lot of leisurely know, time. You have more time to be mayor. I mean, that, I know. that's pretty, that's got to be fun. It is. Yeah, it is. Good. It's just I'm good. still feeding at six o'clock in the morning and eight o'clock at night. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. um, you know, uh, uh, going back to when we were when you were giving out the proclamation for suicides, I I always remember as a kid. I think there was always like fifty thousand auto deaths in the United States, and it was like you know, um, I think it was around fifty thousand every year. And I was uh, for years and years and years. And with more the population increasing, I guess I just looked, auto deaths have gone down to like 40,000, and the population has increased in that 30 years by quite a bit. But I never realized suicide, there's actually more deaths in suicide than there is on, on in, than in auto deaths. And that, that's kind of, that's really sad and uh, surprising to me, because I always thought, you know, people driving, I guess, has gotten safer for years now that the number of auto deaths across the country has got, gone down. I guess cars are safer, more seat belts. seat belts. But but you figure, yeah. look how many more drivers there are. I mean, just in California, how many more drivers are there now than there was 30 years ago? I mean, you can't go on a freeway on a Saturday now without it being bumper to bumper on weekends when weekends were always that sacred time. You could drive almost anywhere you wanted. You never had any traffic. But that, the social pro you know, issues now and the pressures and yeah. the expectations well, the, of kids the, and... The yeah. businesses, they, they were open five days a week yeah. back in the day. Right, right. You know, so the weekend was really weekend. Right. That's when you mowed your yard and right. you know, did all your running around. But, but now it's 24-7. It's yeah, yeah, and it's interesting how that's gone down and, and that is. Anyway, uh, so I attended the YMCA meeting on the 24th. Uh, Eunice mentioned the, the Via del Sol project. Also uh, attended the uh, Chino Cultural Foundation's fundraiser on Saturday night, the 26th, when mm -hmm. they had the murder mystery, uh, <laughs> the famous Die Lawyer Die, um, <laughs> which, um, I'm sorry, uh, Gary's, Gary's gonna talk about that a little bit. And uh, um, so uh, it's been, you're right, it's been a very hot, crazy three, uh, three weeks, but um, just everybody, if you get a chance to come out to the fair uh, for Chino Day, we'd appreciate it. Thank you. Councilman Elrod, anything this evening? Yes, I just wanted to uh, mention that uh, on, let's see, what was it? I get my days. On Sunday was the Bass Picnic. Oh, yeah. And uh, there was over a thousand people this year. It was amazing. Oh. And of course, when we pull up and park, that's when the skies opened. <laughs> and oh, man, I'm. <laughs> I haven't seen it rain that hard in a long time, but you gotta see those guys running all over the place trying to get out of the weather, but it was a lot of fun. It turned out fine, but, uh, and then on Monday was the Basque breakfast, and they served over 100, really? 200, I mean, I'm oh, over 200 breakfasts. Central Basque. Yeah, food. yeah, they did, so it's always a big day. Yeah, so. but it isn't just a breakfast. It's almost a well, three to four hour event. Oh, yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. you know, it, it always starts late and, then, and stays late, but uh, it's pretty good. You know, you get the real bass bacon mm -hmm. and then the Latinka sausage and eggs and bread and, you know, the whole nine yards. Family yard. style. Family style. Nice. Yeah. And so it's always a good, great event. And uh, that concludes my report. Okay. Councilmember George, you have item number 24. I do. Thank you. The, um, as uh, Tom mentioned, the uh, the $1,000... <coughs> donation to the big yellow bus program um, and he covered it uh, you know really that's it's an unbelievable program that the uh, partnership between the LA County Fair and the cities in Los Angeles County at least in Los Angeles County San Bernardino County also uh, it's a very costly project 
as was also mentioned. And uh, I would also like to, uh, to uh, donate out of the uh, support program $1,000 to, uh, to the, uh, the, the LA County Fair Big Yellow Bus Program. Do I do it twice? No, it just do it's all one, one motion. Okay, and then uh, the uh, I've always been impressed with the uh, the uh, Chino Boxing Foundation since my uh, first first uh, time uh, um, at one of their at the dinner, and uh, finding out that one of our local uh, representatives is uh, used to used to box, and um, herself, and uh, and then w I went to the uh, boxing match uh, uh, with Paul a couple of weekends ago. Yeah. It's just a phenomenal program for youth, and I would like to uh, also uh, put uh, out of the support program $250 towards the Chino Boxing Foundation. Okay, motion would be appropriate then. Okay, motion from uh, Mayor Pro Tem Howie, second from Councilman Elrod, and the item passes unanimously. Additional reports? I do, thank you. Um, on the 19th of uh, last month, uh, we attended, uh, the three of us attended uh, the Coffee with Kurt in Ontario. Uh, very interesting, um, very interesting coffee. Uh, a lot of strange, I mean, st I shouldn't say strange. A lot of uh, diverse groups that were, that were there with, uh, with uh, opinions that differed from the uh, education, uh, <laughs> the educational groups that were there. I'm trying to keep this nice. And the, uh, as well as the political groups that were there. And uh, I'm just, I would just like to know Vin, that um, is the, is, can you guarantee that the coffee with Kurt on the 16th will be as entertaining as that one was? <laughs> Oh, well then I don't know if I'm going to go or not, but. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you buy your tickets. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was, it was unique. I'll tell you. That's right. Um, and then see on the 21st, uh, I attended my first chamber of commerce uh, meeting as the uh, representative from the council. Uh, excellent, excellent meeting. Thank you. The, uh, and then, of course, the Ed, Ed Graham's retirement, which was, <laughs> which was outstanding, and that was also unique. The um, 22nd, the Villa del Sol ribbon cutting. The 23rd, um, the uh, League of Cities had a uh, legislative meeting uh, on uh, opposing uh, SB 649, which is the uh, Senate bill that um, takes the, it kind of takes the power away from the, from the cities to regulate uh, where Telecommunic telecommunication companies can put their uh, their equipment. I knew, the reason I think it was a unique meeting because I mean it's it's it was because the last time I attended one of those meetings I was on the other side. <laughs> so this and this time I'm you know fighting on, on this side. But um, anyway, it was it was really well done, well presented. Uh, the uh, and it's going to now yeah, I won't go there. Anyway, it's gonna it's it'll be interesting to see where this where this goes. The um, and then the uh, next day, uh, the uh, met with Laura Morales um, and Vanessa from um, from Con uh, Senator Leva's office uh, to t again talk about SB 649 and uh, and where we go, you know, where we go from here, because that's basically what's going to have to be where we go from here. And then on the 26th, as Tom mentioned, the Chino Cultural Foundation uh, hosted the uh, the uh, the great <laughs> the great event of. Die, lawyer, die. <laughs> Poor Fred. And of course, Fred was uh, was at our table, and we had a we had a lot of fun with with Fred during during that because there were quite a few jokes that were pointed in his direction. I, I will say it was very tastefully done, and I was not overly insulted by the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> but it was well done. It was a, and it was a great play. And and the next time that the cultural foundation puts one of these on, you should attend because you really miss out if you don't. Uh, but on the same evening that you, you know, because that was the same evening as the spaghetti dinner, mm -hmm. and I, I, don't, I couldn't go to, to both, so I donated my tickets so somebody that could go to that spaghetti dinner. Because um, those are always good for the Boy Scouts. The, uh, let's say on the 28th, uh, Community Services uh, Committee meeting. Um, introduced the new, the new person at Absentia, the new council member who's gonna be the liaison to that, that's uh, Paul Rodriguez. And uh, the meeting was, uh, very well handled. If someone was on vacation and Sylvia took over, great job. The uh, and then on the first, 
um, attended, represented with, with Tom represented the, uh, uh, at the LA County uh, pre-opening party, premier party, uh, representing Chino, so, you know, let them know that we're, we're there for the yellow bus program and for everything else and, and Chino Day at the fair. And uh, they always do a great job with that also. That's it. Councilman Rodriguez. Okay. Uh, a lot of the issues and, and uh, events that were already stated, were, uh, we were there. I was there. All three of us, you know, or all of us. Um, the ones that I highlighted, uh, I want to highlight the first would be the, I met with the Public Works, the PW. And I want to say that, Jose, the, the whole team does a tremendous job uh, uh, of uh, working with the city to keep us structured and organized. So I really commend all of the hard work that you all do. And uh, it's very uh, insightful to, to see how the networks really mesh, and it's a good job. Um, being the liaison with the school district, I, I met with uh, uh, the Measure 6 discussion. Uh, last Thursday, and a, a good explanation as to where their, what their vision is for uh, leveling out uh, Chino High School. They're going to be making it into a, a brand new school with technology and, and really just everything. So it's going to be a tremendous uh, project there. Um, again, uh, meeting with uh, the seniors on, on the 1st of uh, September was uh, very helpful and insightful for me meeting the the senior citizens and, and seeing how I can perhaps uh, support them in their needs of different activities and so forth. You fit uh, right in? Yeah, I fit right in. I, I felt <laughs> just pass me some, some donuts and uh, coffee, you know. <laughs> Turn on Netflix. Can't help. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, going back to what uh, Tom and the presentation on, on suicide, uh, uh, as a trained counselor, school counselor, I, I worked with. Uh, uh, many youth at, at Don Lugo and also with the state of California on initiatives for uh, suicide prevention as well as for uh, anti-bullying programs. In fact, I even teach the program for Cambridge College. So I'm quite familiar with that and how uh, important it is to keep uh, tabs as to what the, what the agencies and departments are doing to prevent this. Uh, teaching once at uh, alternative to expulsion here in Chino. Uh, I would see kids that would uh, literally self-mutilate, which told me there's something wrong there. Yeah, so I would refer them right away to a uh, counselor to get them the help. And of course, the parents that would have to be involved. Uh, uh, with that, th there's quite a few other things I, I attended. Uh, most remarkably, I think this last Friday, besides the senior citizens, uh, I was invited to the first day of, of uh, the Muslim celebration for uh, the Mecca pilgrimage that's done in the Middle East and uh, met quite a few of the board members from the Muslim community. And I have some ideas to bring to not only the city council, but also the school district with utilizing uh, <coughs> Uh, the youth from the Muslim community as perhaps uh, tutors after school. So they, they will be able to get not only uh, familiar with uh, helping uh, the elementary schools, perhaps even the junior highs, and also picking up uh, requirements for hours for their senior and college uh, requirements for community service. So I'll be working with them in, in uh, that area. So I'll conclude with, with that uh, high note and uh, thank you for listening. <laughs> Matt Valentine. The report. Um, essentially where we are with that, is that was a huge water project. Uh, we're trenching essentially from central to uh, close to Magnolia. Um, our inspectors did find an issue at the initial stages of that water project and is making the contractor redo some of that work. Um, so we appreciate everybody's <coughs> patience. I drive by it every day and I'm reminded of all the work that's going on there. Um, on tonight's agenda, the council awarded uh, additional $32,000 for design and that design is for the overlay portion of that street. Um, so once that design is completed, we'll then overlay that street and um, also what's being designed are the curb ramps um, 
along that whole stretch. So once the design's complete, we'll be out to bid for that portion and we'll complete that whole street. That concludes my report. Thank you. Mr. Galante. Uh, if I could, the one issue I'd like to raise is what Council Member George uh, reported on, and that's SB 649. I, I just want to stress that this legislation really not only is meant to take away a lot of legal authorities, the authority that cities have to regulate wireless telecommunications facilities. I believe, and, and legal city attorneys who have discussed this believe that the uh, legislation itself is very deceptive. It speaks to small cell uh, telecommunications facilities, but when you actually look at the details of what would be automatically permitted, they're anything but small. So you could find in your city this proliferation of these facilities without having an opportunity to, to meaningfully uh, evaluate them, and, and they could be pretty intrusive. So I, I, I support that effort to uh, at least get in front of legislators to um, address your concerns or, or any of the community's concerns. I think Thank for you. them, why small cell, just to continue that, you're looking at a, you know, at a, at a pole that's maybe 60 feet. They, they consider small cell a pole that's 40 feet. Still, it's a 40-foot pole mm -hmm. with a refrigerator hanging on the side of it. Yeah. So That's what I understand. It's refrigerator size uh, units that are going to be placed on utility poles. Right. The wherever they feel like doing it. Right. The equipment box is fairly yeah, large. I forget the ground. dimensions. Yeah. <coughs> Instead of on the ground. One, one more comment. The the Assembly Member Freddie Rodriguez has voted against that. So our local assemblyman at least has voted against it, but he's it's, definitely in the minorities. I'm curious what they're going to do on um, areas where it's underground. Are they going to try to hang them on light poles or are they going to be installing these separate poles with these refrigerator box looking things and, on them? And that's a good question, but the, the incentive is for telecommunications companies not to put them underground because it's obviously more expensive to do so, so they could be pretty obtrusive. It's just ridiculous. Okay, thank you, Fred. And you did survive, yes, you did survive the play. It was, <laughs> it was enjoyable, yes. I, I more than survived it, so I'm grateful for the invitation. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Paul? Oh, yes, I have one last comment. I, I did meet with uh, the Francis estate group, and, and it's interesting with what they have, and I look forward to uh, listening more to every all parties involved. Okay. okay. Chief Constock? No report, thank you. Nothing. And Chief Shackelford? No report, ma'am. No report from the fire department. Okay, with that, um, we're going to adjourn. I'd like to adjourn in memory of those who lost their lives in the last hurricane and pray that there's no more people that lose lives in the coming hurricane that comes. So we'll adjourn to the next regular meeting, which will be held on Tuesday, September 19th at 7, unless closed session is required, and that will start at 6. So with that, we are adjourned. Thank you.